the synthesis of acetyl salicylic acid. Attention, salicylic acid can cause severe damage of the eyes and is toxic if swallowed. Acetic anhydride and sulfuric acid can cause severe chemical burns of the skin and eyes. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. Do not use the product for medication purposes even though it might be pure enough. The setup is a hot plate, a round bottom flask with a steering bar and a reflux condenser. First, 4 grams of salicylic acid are added to the flask. Then 6 milliliters of acetic anhydride are added while stirring. At the end, 6 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid are added to the flask. Then the apparatus is closed and the flask is placed in a water or an oil bath. Usually the flask is only immersed so far that the surface of the content of the flask is at the same level as the oil bath. This prevents the contents from getting hotter than the boiling point of the solvent at the wall over its surface. In this case the heat is so low that this can be neglected and the flask can be heated faster. The water bath is heated up to a temperature of 70 to 80 degrees C. When the temperature is reached, the mixture is stirred for 25 minutes. The OH group of the salicylic acid is esterified by the acetic anhydride. This is catalyzed by the sulfuric acid. The addition of an acetyl group is also called acetylation. The use of glacial acetic acid or acetyl chloride will only lead to a bad yield or no reaction at all. At the end the flask can be removed from the water bath and is left to sit until it feels warm to the touch. After that a beaker with 100 milliliters of water and ice is prepared and the content of the flask is added while stirring vigorously. This will cause residues of acetic anhydride to hydrolyze and the sulfuric acid and acetic acid get into solution. The acetyl salicylic acid will precipitate out because of its low solubility in cold water. When the amount of precipitate stays constant the product can be filtered off. It's useful to hold the stirring bar in place with a magnet. The rest of the product is washed out of the beaker with a bit of water. Then the filter is squeezed between paper towel to get rid of water which contains most of the impurities. After that the acetyl salicylic acid mostly contains water and traces of acetic acid. To find out if salicylic acid is still present a solution of iron 3 chloride is used. Even very small amounts of salicylic acid can cause the formation of a purple iron salicylate complex. Salicylic acid and acetyl salicylic acid have a very low solubility in cold water. That's why only small amounts are needed for the test. The formation of the complex takes a few seconds and the intensity of the color will increase after a short period of time. This proves that all of the salicylic acid has reacted. Next the product is recrystallized. For this a round bottom flask with a stirring bar and a reflux condenser is used again. Different solvents can be used for the recrystallization in which water is the cheapest one. The disadvantage is that drying the product takes a bit longer than with the other solvents. A small amount of the solvent is added to the substance. The apparatus is closed and heated with an oil bath. When the solvent is boiling, only a part of the product should have dissolved. If all dissolves, too much solvent was used, leading to a decrease of the yield. When the boiling point is reached, a small amount of solvent is added through the condenser and then it is left to heat up until it boils again. The addition of solvent is repeated until the substance has dissolved completely.
In the recrystallization the effect is used that substances are likely to recrystallize from solutions with less impurities than before. A small part of the product is always lost in this process, that's why the amount of solvent is kept as low as possible. Several recrystallizations will lead to a very pure product with the least amount of loss. At the end the flask is removed from the oil bath and left to sit until it has cooled down to room temperature again. Just after a few minutes shiny little needles are formed, which become larger until the flask has cooled down completely. In about half an hour the complete acetyl salicylic acid has crystallized out. Then it is broken up with a glass rod. The crushing will release some water that is locked up between the crystals. The product is filtered off again and water is used again to wash out crystals in the flask. Large shiny crystals are often a sign of a pure product. The higher the impurities, the smaller and less beautiful are the crystals. The crystals can be dried on air or in a desiccator with a drying agent of your choice. In this case sulfuric acid is used. The product had to be recrystallized two times. After drying it, the amount of acetyl salicylic acid was 2.3 grams, which is a yield of 44%. I'm quite sure the low yield is due to the step where the mixture is added to the ice water, because a lot of it stuck to the walls of the flask. Using a smaller flask or using larger amounts should lead to yields at around 80-85%. to 85%. This was the synthesis of acetyl salicylic acid. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment.